QuickBooks Online Reports Overview. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the option that has the Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We'll select the United States version of the software and verify that we're not a robot. Zooming in by holding down control up on the scroll wheel currently at 125% on the zoom in. We note that in the cog drop down we're currently in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We're going to be duplicating some tabs to put reports in by right clicking on the tab up top to duplicate it. And then right click on the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the left as the tab to the right thinks reports on the left and we want the balance sheet as that's thinking i'm going to tab to the right open up the reports again this time we want the profit and loss the p l the income statement i'm going to close the hamburger the hamburger and then scroll up and change the range from 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it and then tab to the left and close the hamburger and then scroll up and ranging, changing from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, and run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we have been doing every time. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Back to the first tab, note that in prior presentations, we've been looking at the setup or the, the forms by cycle, customer cycle, vendor cycle, employee cycle. Gonna hit the plus button on the left hand side. Remember that the goal of the business is revenue generation. Our goal in the accounting department is number one, to make a system so the data input is as easy as possible to record financial transactions, those financial transactions then being used to create the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, and related reports. Our number two goal is to be able to facilitate those financial transactions and communicate them with the people we're doing business with, like customers, vendors, and employees. Our focus now is on the creation of the financial statements. This is going to be the end result, the products of, of our data input into the system. That's what accounting is. We're entering past financial transaction data in order to construct, in essence, the financial statements, noting that the major financial statements are the balance sheet and the income statement. So we spent a lot of time uh, on the balance sheet income statement. We'll spend more time just analyzing them and other reports in the future. But now let's just get a quick look at the other reports because they can be a little bit overwhelming. But if we see them in the light of they're related to typically expanding on, giving more information about some line item in the financial statement reports of the balance sheet and the income statement, then they don't become quite as overwhelming to think about. Also realize that some of the reports that are included in the reports center are really just reports that you can create and construct from a balance sheet and an income statement. They're variants of the balance sheet and the income statement. You might have a comparative balance sheet income statement. It's the same thing, but now you're just basically changing the comparative component to it, which you can construct from a standard balance sheet and income statement, which we will do in future presentations. So I'm gonna do that by right clicking the tab up top and duplicate the tab. And so we can look at some of these other reports and think of them in relation to the major financial statement reports of the balance sheet and the income statement. We're gonna to go to the reports on the left hand side and I'm gonna close the hamburger up top. Now in the reports area, You've got your standard reports. You've got your uh, custom reports. These are reports that if we made changes to them, we can save those changes in a custom area. We'll talk about 
when that might be useful in future presentation. And then we've got the uh, management reports. And these could be useful tools to, to format your reports, uh, possibly for presentation uh, to management. So you got the company overview, the sales performance and expense performance. We might take a look at them in more detail, but they give you kind of a more nice or formal presentation look to the reports. Most of the time when we're working on the reports internally, we're going to be using the standard uh, reports. Okay, so then up top, you've got your favorite reports. Now these are favorite reports because we've clicked the star. That's all it means. So if I had another report down here and I put, I hit the star, it would come up to the favorite reports and moving it up top. So clearly any report that you use all the time, you're gonna to wanna to pull up here. You're, all, you're pretty much everybody is gonna have a star next to the balance sheet and the income statement typically because those are gonna be your major financial statement reports. Then let's just go through the, the standard categories down below. I'm going to scroll in a little bit more here. So I'll scroll out so that just enough so it has two columns. So we've got the business overview report. So first we've got the, the uh, audit log. So I'm going to right click on this and open in a new tab and just to check some of them out. And if I go into the new tab, let it think a bit. So now you've got your information about the users in the account. So this, if you have multiple people that are using the system, you can kind of uh, track the usage of them within it. So this isn't really related, of course, to the financial statements, it's going to be more of an internal kind of audit uh, report log, you've got your drop down, all users, and then you've got your users here. So I'm going to close that back out. And then we've got the balance sheet detail report. That's the one that we've been opening most of the time for the balance sheet, we've got the balance sheet summary. Notice it's just another balance sheet here. But Oftentimes you might want to start, I'm going to right click on the summary and open it up with a summary report because it's going to be more simplified. So it looks like the balance sheet here, except that we, we have basically the account types that we saw from the general ledger are now grouped together as one line item. And so it's similar to as if you took the balance sheet over here and you just collapsed, you collapsed all the, all the arrows here. So again, you can kind of construct that from a standard balance sheet. This could be good for external reporting to start off with because you could start off with the balance sheet and then uh, dive into more detail. Next, we have some balance sheet reports. Notice that the standard balance sheet is here. The next one up top here is the balance sheet comparison. So if I right click and open that, this is just a, a, another kind of format of the balance sheet. And you can actually create this from a balance sheet. We're now just comparing two periods of time. So once you start get, getting into comparative reports, as we see when we construct these, you can start to get into a whole lot, a whole world of different reports just from a standard balance sheet as you compare month to month, quarter to quarter, this year to last year, this quarter to last quarter, and so on and so forth. And you can also subtract the two of them to see the difference and the percentage change. So those variants become almost infinite in the, in the number of reports you can get just from like a standard balance sheet layout. And then you've got the balance sheet detail, another kind of variant on the balance sheet, the summary, I'll just right click and open that one. Notice I'm right clicking and opening them up in a new window. So I can come back to this window. So if I go back on over here, this is just basically a balance sheet that doesn't have the little drop downs but uh, instead just groups by account type. And that would be like taking this balance sheet over here and collapsing the triangles, for example. So and again, you can kind of make this balance sheet from a standard balance sheet. It's a good starting point to lead people in and not overwhelm people with data and then start from there. And then you've got uh, the, the business snapshot. If we right click and open the business snapshot. So it gives you some nice graphs and whatnot, some visuals to take a look at. Uh, previous year income comparison. So it gives you some good information, who owes me, who I owe in one window. Not the place I go most of the time, but because I would rather go to the reports themselves to find the detail. But sometimes if you get used to it, it might give you a nice uh, quick look at things. And again, obviously it's a visual thing that could be nice to look at. Uh, profit and loss as a percent of income. So now we're on income statement reports. Note that the major income statement report is just the profit and loss report right here, which you would think would normally have a star next to it. And then these are just variants, right? So now we've got profit and loss percentage of, of total income. This is a common way to present the profit and loss. If I look at that and close the hamburger, now we've just got this percentage over here, this column. 
That's a common thing to add. We will show you how to do that, but notice it's just a variant on the normal income statement that we can build from a normal income statement. Another comparison, this would be similar to the balance sheet comparison, which we can build and will do so in future reports. So you don't wanna be overwhelmed that there's a whole bunch of reports because these are basically just variants. Profit loss detail, another variant of the profit loss. Profit and loss uh, year to date comparison. So now we've got another basically comparative report. Profit and loss by customer. So now you've got the profit and loss report that's breaking out on a customer you know, basis. And then profit and loss by month. So another kind of variant of the profit and loss because now you're breaking that out on a month by month component. You can make that from a standard profit and loss. Profit and loss by tag group. So these are those tags. So if I open that up, uh, we've, we've got the profit and loss by tag and that's that, a specialty. They don't, we don't have any tags right now. But if you're using tags, you can have a specialty kind of, of report that's being grouped by the tags. Pro and then here's your standard profit and loss, quarterly profit and loss summary. So another variant on the profit and loss and then the statement of cash flows. Now, oftentimes people ask, like, why, why don't I emphasize the statement of cash flows as I do with the other major financial statement reports, balance sheet and income statement? And the reason is because the statement of cash flow, although important and a major financial statement report, uh, it's really usually made, I'm gonna make this from 010122, after you make the balance sheet and the income statement. Because the balance sheet and the income statement are gonna be on whatever accounting basis you're using, whether that be tax or accrual or cash. But oftentimes there's a variant from just a strict cash flow. Even if you're on a cash basis, you have to change from a strict cash basis when buying like a building or something because you have to depreciate it, which is an accrual thing. So then you've got this other report that we can look at, which is just basically cash flows. So you can think of it kind of like uh, it ties into the balance sheet, giving you more detail on the balance sheet because the end of it, 4,063.52 should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. If I pull out the trusty calculator and we go boom, calculator, and we got the cash here of 2001 plus the undeposited funds which is also cash 2062.52, 4063.52, which is that number there. But that's not really the way you, you want to think of it. I mean, it's an, it is an expansion on cash and showing the cash flow, but it's really showing you the activity uh, and the cash is the lifeblood of the company on more of a cash basis. So the first part is the operating activities, which are kind of like an income statement on a cash basis, or it's taking net income and reconciling to net income on a cash based system. And then you've got investments, which is which is basically the cash flows for investments like stocks and bonds, but also uh, equipment, property plants and equipment, and then financing activities like uh, you putting money into the company, stocks and whatnot, if it was a corporation and draws or dividends and whatnot here. So we'll talk more about the statement of cash flows. It is an important report, but when you're doing bookkeeping, it's not as important at all as the balance sheet and the income statement because those are the ones that are gonna be primarily affected as you're doing the data input. And then the statement of cash flows is kind of constructed from that. And QuickBooks does a pretty good job of making one, a default one that stays in balance and ties out but it still might not be perfect, you know, and we'll talk more about it. The statement of cash flow is constructing. It can be a little bit, a little bit tricky, but we'll close that out for now. So there's that one. And I'm going to scroll back down. So then we got the who owes you money. So you would think this report would tie in mainly, these reports would tie mainly into the balance sheet account of accounts receivable. Who owes you money? Accounts receivable. That's what the accounts receivable is. Gives us more detail on that. So if I go back on over, we're gonna say, all right, then we've got the accounts receivable aging detail. So now we've got this aging report and this gives us more detail uh, on who owes us the money it get in a detailed fashion, but it also breaks out how old or outstanding the items are. The total here, if I changed the date range to December, should match what's on, on the balance sheet for AR. So it's given us more detail about a line item on the balance sheet, like most of the reports do. This is the accounts receivable aging summary. So similar layout of a report that you might be familiar with if you've worked with accounts receivable at all, where you've got the breakout of how old they are in summary, 
and the customers and the total once again should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. Closing that out, we've got the collections report. So it gives us information on, on the collection. So again, similar to close to the AR, we got the customer uh, balance detail report. So this is gonna be similar to these agings, but they're not gonna give us the breakout of the agent, just give us the information by customer. These two right here, and then the summary is similar. These two right here are useful to know that the balance sheet account of accounts receivable breaks out by customer. That's what you want. But oftentimes in practice, if I go to the first tab, you'll find that information practically in the sales area and the customers. And the, the balances for open invoices are, are basically backing up and supporting your accounts receivable. So we'll talk more about that in the future, but they're just giving more detail on the major balance sheet account of accounts receivable. You got your uh, invoice list. Now invoices are the items that increase accounts receivable. So if you're talking about open invoices, generally the open invoices that have not been paid, we haven't collected on them, are gonna be the balance in accounts receivable, giving more detail about the accounts receivable. Invoices and uh, receive payment, again, this is a variant on accounts receivable because the invoices are the things that that increase accounts receivable. Open invoices, a report that's given us detail once again on accounts receivable in essence because invoices are what create the accounts receivable. Uh, you got the statement list showing the statements that have been sent out. So your statements, uh, again, giving you information about stuff you're doing within basically the customer cycle. And then you've got your terms list, which is the terms like net 30 and net 10 and so on. So this is just a list of those terms, not terribly useful most of the time because you'd basically be changing those lists up here in the, in the information up top or as you do the data input. Unbilled charges, so charges, so unbilled charges are charges that you have uh, taken place, possibly that you've entered a bill or expense. And then when you, when you, are then going to create an invoice, you're going to pull that into the invoice. So this is given a list of those items that you have not yet billed, meaning you haven't created an invoice to the customer, but they're waiting. So next time you go into, so for example, if I went to uh, Amy's, Amy's Bird, if I go invoice and say Amy's Bird Sanctuary, then I've got this item to pull over into it because it's waiting there because I already entered it. So we'll talk about billable, billable items and entering time later, but that's what that report is doing. And do you want to leave? Yes. So that is that one closing that out. Unbilled time is a similar thing. We have time entered that we haven't created an invoice for. We haven't billed the customer. And then you've got sales and customers. Now the sales is an income line item, in essence, revenue. So you would think this would be giving you more information about revenue. Customers could have something to do with accounts receivable, but we're more focused on the income statement line item now. So we've got the customer contact list. Doesn't tie out directly to a financial statement report, but it's just giving us a list of our customers. And then you've got uh, the deposit detail. Now the deposit detail, if I open that up, kind of ties out to the bank account, but it's kind of here because you would think that most of your deposits would be by the by the customers. Now this report, you can kind of create this report because it's uh, it's given it's basically giving you detail. If I go to the first tab and I go into my checking account, and if I was trying to look at my like increases to the checking account, I can try to I can try to customize this report and then filter it by transaction type and possibly pick up say the deposits and i might have other things that increase it such as transfers or whatnot but that's another way that we can kind of run reports related to the checking account which is often something that we might end up needing to do because there's a lot of activity and different transactions going through it i'm going to close that out and we've got then the the estimates and progress invoicing uh, by customer so this would more likely be used in a job cost type of system, which would be using the estimate forms and a progress invoicing system would be oftentimes in like a percentage of completion type of business, which is more of a specialty area. You got estimates by customers. 
So that's going to be basically not impacting the financial statements, but tracking those estimates that you're that are going to be like the initial touching point to possibly be picking up a job. And then you've got income by customer summary. So if I open that up, this gives us more detail on the profit and loss income line items. So income total comes out to 10,002. And so this one, if I change the date from 0101 to 0 to 123122 and close the hamburger and run it. So now you've got your income by customer information, 968341. And you've got here 10. So sometimes it's not gonna tie out because it doesn't tie out as nicely oftentimes as accounts receivable because sometimes you can post something to the income account and not assign a customer to it. So, but if you if you use the same process of assigning a customer every time, it should tie out quite nicely. And that's one reason that we don't basically make income accounts by customer. I don't say this is my uh, this is this is my Tom Jones revenue account, even though Tom pays most of our revenue or something like that, because you want to just have the income account for what it is you do and be able to use these other reports if you're in a full service accounting system to give them more detail about about breaking out your income by customer. So that's a useful uh, tool to note. But again, it, it differs depending on the kind of um, system you have. We'll talk more about it later. Inventory valuation uh, detail. So this is your inventory report. It's giving you s more information on the balance sheet account of inventory. So there's the overall inventory account. This gives you more information about it. And then you've got the inventory valuation summary. Once again, should tie out to the balance sheet account of inventory payment method lists. So this gives you uh, a list of your payment methods, which you know is a populated on a form. Physical inventory worksheet. So this helps you to kind of track your inventory if you have inventory and do a physical count possibly with it. So it ties into the inventory once again. Product and service list. So we talked about setting up our products and services. So uh, this would be just simply a list of those products and services, the things that you would populate the sales forms with, invoice sales receipts. You got the sales by customer detail. So this is similar to the, the uh, other one we had over here, but this is sales by customer. We'll talk about the distinction between these two later income by customer and sales by customer, because one of these I think is taking on the income and expense side of things by customer. So if you're assigning some expenses to customer, I think the sales by customer detail is just taking on the revenue side of things is the distinguishing factor. We'll talk more about it later, but if I go into this one and I go from 010122 to 123122 and run it, now you've got, I think this is just your revenue by customer and the total down here is at the 102805. Does that tie out to our income statement? We've got the uh, 10, it's a lot closer, yeah. So this is our income side. The other report is trying to take the income and expenses if you applied expenses uh, to a particular customer, I believe is the difference between the two. And then you got sales by customer summary, similar report, giving us detail on the sales line item. Sales by customer type detail, so now if you have types of, of customers, grouping the customers and types, then you have that. Sales by product service detail. So this is the other way we typically break out. Let's just do the summary. That'll give the detail. Let's look at the summary. This, this is the other way we break out our income line because we don't typically want to put every item that we sell, every piece of inventory, every service that we do. We typically want to group them together and then uh, we would like to have another report breaking out our sales by item, by the things, goods, and services that we sold. Again, this would only work if you ha are using a full accounting system, using items and using sales receipts and, I'm sorry, using invoices and sales receipts. Yeah, so from 010122 to 123122. And then we'll run it. And so that comes out down here to 10280, which is pretty close to our number here. It's not gonna be exact if you don't use items, right? If you don't do the, the, the full service accounting system to report your income. If you're just using bank feeds, for example, to record uh, your deposits coming through, a deposit form doesn't have items 
and doesn't use the same kind of customer detail to run these sub ledger reports. So you might change your system a bit. But if you're recording income with invoices and sales receipts, these are great sub reports to give you more detail on your income line item so that you don't record income accounts by customer or too many by item, right? Because you have these sub reports to do that. So then we got the time activities by customer details. So now I've got the time by customer, transaction list by customer. So this gives us your transactions by customer. And uh, and that, that well, anyways, we got the transaction list by tags. So once again, we have those tags uh, that uh, if you have the tags turned on, which is a specialty kind of thing, we might spend some time on that later. I'm kind of interested to dive into that. But in any case, uh, what you owe. So these are people that you owe. So if I go to the balance sheet now we're mainly focusing you would think on the accounts payable now people that you owe money to this time so back to the tab to the right we've got the uh, 1099s now 1099s are tax related item so we'll dive into 1099s later so they're they're a specialty area based on our tax obligations in the united states so we have to report to the irs if certain conditions are met that we paid money to these people so the IRS can follow up and collect from them. Uh, and then we've got the accounts payable aging detail. This is similar to the accounts receivable aging detail. So you'll see a similar layout. And so we have the aging this way because this is the detail broken out by vendor who we owe the money to. So it's just giving us more detail on that accounts payable. Same with this one, the bill payment list anything related to the bills and unpaid bills. Bills are the thing that increases the accounts payable. So this is a report giving us more detail in essence about accounts payable, the outstanding balances. You got the vendor balance detail and the vendor balance summary. These also are similar to the, the aging details. Uh, and they're great because they give you a, a total but oftentimes in practice, you'll be working over here in the centers for the expenses center by vendor and going into the individual vendors and whatnot. This total outstanding balance area, the amounts that are open, should in essence tie out to the accounts payable. So we'll dive more into those later. Then you got the expenses and vendors. So when you're talking about expenses, you're expanding on more information. We would think from the income statement, the profit and loss on the expense side of things. Note on the income statement, the expenses are, are by category, what we paid for, what we bought. So we don't have the expenses by vendor who we bought from on the income statement. We don't typically put an expense saying, this is Verizon. No, we say telephone bill. And then, so if we wanna break out that more information, we might have reports that can break it out by vendor. So we got the check detail, now notice the check detail has given us more information that is similar to what we might find and be able to construct on the balance sheet by going into the checking account and sorting for the decreases, which would be customize. We can go filters and we can say transactions. And I want to look at the decreases, which would be uh, the payments, the checks, the and there's kind of a lot of them because we have these different things that could be a decrease so it gets a little bit tedious, possibly a transfer i'm looking major uh principally for the expense form and I run that and so now we've got our decrease so you can kind of construct that detail from the checking account anytime you're looking at a report that's having in essence some kind of increase or decrease to the checking account you can sort and filter to the actual checking account and then i can go over here and then we've got the expense by vendor so now we've got the expenses now by vendor. So breaking out that information instead of just by account, you got the open purchase orders. Now these are not purchase orders. You'll recall aren't actually forms that affect the financial statements. They are simply a request for inventory, but we would like to track those open purchase orders. Oftentimes you might not do that in a report, although it might be useful for external reporting purposes or to report to a supervisor, you would be going internal here, going to uh, the the vendor area, which is here, and then possibly go into the expenses and sorting, filtering, 
by uh, the purchase orders possibly is one way that you can do that and see whether they're open or closed and and so on so so there's those we've got the purchased by product service detail so if you purchased like inventory then you've got the items that you that you purchased so now you can run your purchases by the inventory items if you don't have inventory then that might not be as useful a report purchased by vendor detail so now we're making our purchases again by who we purchased from but giving more detail transaction list by vendor so now you've got your transactions by who we paid and then you got your vendor contact list next you've got your sales taxes so in the united states we have our sales taxes you got your sales tax liability report that clearly is giving more income detail about the balance sheet account of the liability of the sales tax accounts and then you've got your sales tax detail your sales tax summary then you've got your employees reports the employee reports will only be there if you have infant if you have payroll in essence and you're running the payroll through quickbooks remember with the payroll you have some questions you really want to get sorted out before you start payroll being do i want to do payroll within quickbooks or have a third party payroll provider to help do the payroll i'm going to have to pay for payroll either way and so although one might be more expensive than the other and so on and you and do you want more control over or less control can you depend on a third party and then and then if it's inside of quickbooks that you're that you're running payroll then you may have a whole lot of other added reports that that are giving you more detail much of which is used to create the reporting forms that are necessary which are the paycheck stubs the 941s the 940s and so on all that kind of stuff which is over and above reporting that you need just to create the financial statements so so you'll have a bunch of reports there uh we'll, we'll probably go into those a little bit more when we do the practice problem and hopefully we can turn on payroll for free so that it doesn't add anybody added costs so that we can practice with payroll a little bit more but payroll is a specialty in and of itself so if you have a complex payroll situation we do have a payroll course we'd like to update at some point but <laughs> it'll give you some detail about a little uh, more about how payroll works uh, so then you got uh, for my accountant so this is like your accountant stuff they listed as you got account lists so this is kind of your list of accounts which are the underlying baseline stuff that you need to create the financial statements kind of like the chart of accounts you've got your balance sheet comparison now i don't know why they put this one down here because they already had it up top it's basically just the balance sheet report so it's kind of funny and they, they got your balance sheet yeah we already saw that that's kind of up top so i don't know why that's repeated down here really the general ledger is kind of like the transaction detail report if i open that up that you would see if I go to my balance sheet and drill down into the checking account. This is your transaction detail, but only for the checking account. If you look at the general ledger, you typically think of it as, you know, like that transaction detail, but it has all the accounts in it, right? And then possibly you can filter it uh, from there. So closing that one back out, you've got your journal report. So this is a, a nice report. We'll talk more about it later that bre breaks out all the detail that you've been putting in uh, by date, but it gives you the actual journal entries, even with a form. So you entered an invoice and it gives you the journal entry related to the invoice. So if you wanna practice your debits and credits and try to understand what they're doing uh, with regards to debits and credits, which accounts are affected, not in terms of just increases and decreases, but with debits and credits, this is a useful form. It also might be useful to, to show your supervisor or your client, if you're a bookkeeper, the work that you did. And you may be able to construct a billing process based on how many accounts were impacted, right? So you can say, hey, look, if I, if I do work this month that has this many transactions or this many accounts impacted, I'll charge you this much versus so much if, they, if you're in another threshold, which could be one way to kind of set your billing. Profit and loss comparison. We already saw that. It's a variant of the profit and loss. So same with the profit and loss here. Profit and loss. Recent automa automatic uh, transactions. So if you have automatic transactions turned on, then this will give you some detail about those. Recent transactions. So this gives you some recent transaction information. Reconciliation reports. The main one you would think would be uh, your bank reconciliation, which is kind of a special report because it's more like an internal control report gives you more detail on the checking account 
but it also, like the double entry accounting system itself, with its balancing mechanism, gives you gives you an internal control, more confidence about the whole accounting system altogether. So it's quite important. We have a whole report on bank reconciliations. We got the reoccurring, uh, uh, recurring template lists or list of the templates, statement of cash flows. We already saw that up top. It's down here too. Transaction detailed by account, given your transactions by account. Transaction list by date. We're gonna work on this one a couple times too. It's kind of like the journal over here, but instead of having the debits and credits, it's a little bit more streamlined. It tries to give you all your transactions in essence by date, but you don't. But you have a split item, but you don't have the all the accounts impacted. And if there's more than two accounts, you get the split thing here. But this is another one that if you just wanna count your transactions and possibly come up with a billing based on that, then this could be useful. You can say, hey, look, these are the transactions I did for you last month. I'm gonna bill you if you're within this range, maybe I bill you so much and so on. But some transactions have more detail than others. That's why the journal report has, you can try to count the actual accounts impacted or something and come up with a billing rate based on that maybe. Then you got your transaction uh, list with splits. So this is nice because this is more like the journal report. You've got your transaction list, but anytime you have those splits, it's gonna give you that more information. So this is another, th th this is kind of nice. Uh, I haven't really used this one as much. It gives, you, it gives you the detail, not in terms of a journal entry, but increases and decreases, but then it breaks out these longer transactions so so we might dive into that one more uh in the future and then you've got your good old trial balance this is a quite useful report it is in essence the balance sheet on top of the income statement and i'm going to 12 31 2, 2. and so when you're doing your journal your data input you might just want to open this report instead of the balance sheet and income statement so that you can just have this one report that's streamlined and you can check your data input and drill down on the accounts. So I highly recommend checking that out because it can save you time in terms of having multiple tabs open up top. So we'll, we'll start when we start to dig into to our, our uh, practice problems. Sometimes I'll open the trial balance a lot of times at the end to kind of check our numbers and get used to it. So then we've got our, our more payroll uh, reports down below, which would be applicable if payroll was on. So the general idea, every time you do a data input, you're thinking, what's the impact balance sheet income statement, your major financial transactions, and all the other reports that can be quite overwhelming are really oftentimes, most of them, given more information about one or multiple line items or possibly are simply some variant upon the balance sheet and the income statement. So don't let those, all those variations overwhelm you because, because you know, the balance sheet and the income statement are the major reports and then everything else kind of fits in somewhere uh, to them in some cases. If you think about it that way, it doesn't get quite as overwhelming, hopefully. And so we'll go into more of some of the major reports in future presentations.